Hey guys, welcome back to a another video. Today we'll be doing our first ever movie review of um, Black Widow. As it's come out pretty recently. So before we start, do not worry about spoilers. This will just be a non-spoiler review. We'll just be discussing and giving you an overview of what we thought about the story, characters, villains, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, let's jump right into the review, I guess. So where do you want to start? Story, characters, villains, particular acts, perhaps? A few things about the movie. Of all, I thought it was, it was all right. It wasn't, wasn't the best MCU movie we've had, but it was still pretty good. Yeah. There were, were definitely things that would change back. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was good. It was good. I, for me, personally, I think this movie is good, but only in the first act. The two other acts, I felt kind of sped up just out of nowhere you were in the second act right unknowingly there would be this fast forward to the third act and then you're like wait are we already at the third act like that kind of thing so that kind of bugged me but i think the movie is really good in the first act like i really felt it was strong and why i like the first act was because of the fact they felt like mission impossible it's almost spy genre espionage the action was very reflective of mission impossible well like your more recent mission impossible is like fallout where the action really hits when they land punches you can feel the punches but i don't know whether you noticed or not but the moment they pretty much blatantly copied an uncharted the uncharted 4 sequence with the van got a border bike getting chased by a, a big black suv that's bulletproof and they can't do anything about it um i do agree with you on that because there was definitely some cool things with the environment a bit of action you're you're right it's like a mission impossible movie or a spy movie but yeah the villain as well was um Oh, yeah, that's a controversial one. Yeah, the villain, I would say, is the most controversial thing about this film, is the villain wasn't inherently bad, it was just executed poorly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, like, people like yeah, people are dubbing it as, like, the Mandarin 2.0. And can I just say, I was 20 minutes into this movie, um, Taskmaster shows up, I was like, oh my god, yeah, they're in this movie, oh my god. <laughs> I really like that first, um, so like, I don't want to get into spoilers or anything, but there's a first, your first action se sequence is like almost your introductory to a Taskmaster, but you do get some build up here and there before that whole eventual uh, meetup. And I, and that scene was so good. I, I mainly give this movie high praise because of the first act only. I feel like the first two kind of rushed just because they had to get to a finale. But the first act really kind of fleshes out the story. Hey, this is where Natasha is, what she's going to do, how she gets thrust into action, basically. And the action sequences really, really hit. And especially that whole thing with Yelena. Yelena and Black Widow, their action sequence, you really feel like you go, ooh, ah, like you really have, you feel, you feel the pain. It really shows the fact that the action like how gritty almost dark the action is at some point so we're still currently on like because i'm trying to break it down into like three sections i feel so i felt so recurring story aspect for the first part we'll head into the characters second and we'll head on to the villain and all that sort of stuff but currently we're still focusing on story component trying to be as non-spoilery as possible and i just say that i think yeah i think the red guardian his whole arc and everything in in this film it is great and one of the best parts about it i just i just really like that i think it's cool oh yeah yeah i'm uh david harbour uh yeah david harbour you guys might know him stranger things many other shows and t movies he was in a bad movie um bad Frances called Hellboy. We don't talk about that. Oh my God, was that him? Yeah, Hellboy. He did Hellboy. There was like this whole funny story where he was like gonna get jacked, or at least like he was trying to work out, but then I think he just gave up. So they just gave him that whole bodysuit, or at least that muscle suit, just to, like just play off like he is fit. Now we getting to the characters. Although I like the Red Guardian, he's your comedic guy because he's like I don't want to say anything spoilerish, but he's involved, or at least he his connection with. Yelena and Black Widow or Natasha Romanoff is clearly established in the first act of the movie. Him, I liked his character because I didn't mind his character because he was com he is a comedic guy. But I was I'm pretty conflicted with his character because he's technically a kind of a douche because he's like the he's pretty much if no if people don't I just want to give like people at least like not nothing too spoilerish but. If you've seen pretty much or most of their marketing for this movie, they're pretty much showing who David Harbour's character is, who is the Red Guardian. So people do not know a Red Guardian. It's like your, it's, it's a Russian version of Captain America, basically. So like their makeshift version of that. So that's who Red Guardian is. He was a hero, but then now he's like kind of forgotten now. He's fallen on hard times. Yeah, he's fallen on hard times. But what I didn't like about his character was that he was comedic, but he was also being like self-centered. Well, which is why I'm on the fence with his character, because he's like too much, or at least you should have kept it on an emotional level instead of trying to add up, add some comedy. To the I want to get to uh, Melina or Rachel Weisz's uh, Rachel Weisz's character. I just don't want to I don't want to like spoil anything, but I feel like her character was really underutilized for however long she was in the movie. Uh, yeah, 
her character, like Rachel Liza Weasel, however you pronounce her name, her character of Melina, was, wasn't even in the movie for that much, I would say. She's like only in it for like the second and third act, and even she's not there in that for like too much, I would say. I want to get to Yelena. She's pretty good. I really like the actress Florence Pugh because me personally, and I don't mean it in a harsh way or anything, she's giving her A-game compared to like all the other, everybody else in my opinion. Yeah, she, she's good, yeah. Everybody's either playing it one note or everybody's trying to, at least trying to feel like they are part of it. But Florence Pugh really delivers. Like, I think, I mean, she is, from what I've seen and heard, she's like almost, like her acting is phenomenal from what I've heard. And it really reflects through this movie as well. Like, she she can be a bit jokey, but she is like the little sister. Because if y'all don't know, like, in this movie, she is Na Natasha's sister or quote-unquote sister. To just like, keep it non spoilery with you guys. Her scene with uh, her, her and Red Guardian share a scene in the second act. And I really like that because it was actually really emotional. But then they kind of undermine that because they rushed to this third act. Her acting was pretty good. Like, her acting felt real. Her emotions felt real. She would she would give like a quip here and there, but that dinner table scene with not spoiling anything at this point because it's in the marketing. But there's a dinner table scene in this movie, which I'm pretty sure they showed. There is like a moment where Florence Pugh just acts and like she's really emotional, and you and I was so invested in that. Yeah, it was good. So now I guess we can talk the controversial topic or the hot topic being Natasha Romanoff and how people say she was more overstaged by co-stars or at least the supporting cast like your Red Guardian, Melina, and your Yelena Belova. So did you feel like Scarlett Johansson held her own in this movie? Or do you still feel like, yeah, sure, she was a titular, she, it's her movie because she's the titular character, but the light somewhat still went away from her and it started to shine on everybody else. What did you think of Natasha in this movie, man? She had some tough competition. Well, just like you said, from like from front to pew, David Harbour. Natasha was good. Like, I still, I don't get why people say the focus wasn't on Natasha. I still felt like I was focusing on Natasha. Like, Natasha is your titular character because she is the title character, right? Just like by an inch, the co-stars or the supporting cast still somehow managed to uh, overshadow Natasha or Scarlett Johansson's performance in some way because there were moments where you could kind of feel like I mean it in a bad way but Florence Pugh as Yelena Belova had certain scenes where I feel like she acted a bit better than Natasha or at least like better than Scarlett Johansson so like there were those moments where you could kind of go Natasha is getting kind of upstaged by like these other people so now that we got the characters out the way now we're going to get into the hot topic being the villain or the villains in this case one being taskmaster but there's another villain i'll just say this character's name is just drake off and i'll just leave it at that what did you think of the villain they were pretty much promoting for like almost every single goddamn thing for black widow being taskmaster yeah taskmaster i think was screwed over like that act one fight scene the first one that was really good and great introduction to taskmaster but after that, Taskmaster's whole presence in the movie, and once the secondary villain is introduced, they've kind of become irrelevant, along with it, it being a bad reveal. Yeah, uh, like, to your point, for an introductory scene for that fight, it, it sets up Taskmaster pretty well, which I like. You get to see the fact that he's able to mimic abilities just like that. When he sees that, like, one, two, three steps, like, he can also replicate those one, two, three steps in that same motion, making you go, like, Jesus, he's, like, pretty formidable. And there's even, like, some scenes when you're watching Taskmaster, it's it's almost like he's living Easter egg. You see like, oh my god, he's doing a move that like Captain America would do. He's doing something like Black Widow. He's doing a move. He's doing a, a Hawkeye move. Something like that. So that was cool. But yeah, it's after that first introductory act, or at least in the first act of the movie, throughout the second act and third act, he's kind of like, the character is dismissed until the second act rushing through the third act. And Drakov, Chassmaster is like Drakov's right-hand man in this in this movie. The moment they uh, Drakov does a big reveal, it doesn't change the movie after that. Pretty much you get your still gonna get the seat that whole cg third act where, where the consequences don't matter drakov wasn't bad the drakov guy i don't know what the actor's name is or whatnot but the drakov character was okay i just didn't like some of his writing he's pretty much like an early marvel villain where they're just shallow but with taskmaster it was just the fact that they, they made him snake eyes just a mute in tactical gear whose presence is, so, is supposed to invoke some level of fear everything else after that and in the third act of black widow undermines that character i just want to preface this i don't want to try to say this without being spoilerish but like i don't think the role is bad because of the person they got to do it while i believe the intention in terms of a narrative perspective it never worked for a story perspective because i just felt like it never really had a overall impact it had it felt forced but yet feelingless if you get what i mean before we end 
this one. Uh, do you want to talk about? I don't. We can't talk about the end credit scene because it's it's post credit. It's, it's pretty spoilery stuff. Yeah, definitely. So like, what? How did you find it? It, it is cool. I do like that. Uh, what I don't like about Black Widow the movie is it feels like it never doesn't really explore Black Widow. It just feels like I gotta go back because this one thing is happening, and I think that's why I didn't like the movie. I felt like it could have been a movie where it takes place in the present, but we still could have gone flashbacks to the past. Like they mentioned the Budapest thing, and you get like your little like your you get like your little like sprinkles of like Budapest references but they never really show that besides like one scene I don't want to start like some stupid notion or anything like that but I feel like Black Widow would have worked better as a Disney Plus series just in my opinion or just as a series because we can really flush out that character and I think you could that series could really go on for many seasons or at least like a certain number of seasons I, I could I think at least three or four at best because I feel like Natasha's story that can really flesh out there compared to a movie because it just feels like we're not we're not really getting to know Black Widow and just another thing just like a nitpick of mine I just don't like the fact that the movie had like dialogue where or like you know the character would go like see you later Nat even though you know Nat's fate later on uh, well if you guys know Nat's fate prior to this movie this movie takes this movie came out after Endgame so like you already know she's dead so the move this movie already adds like no consequences because of the fact like she doesn't die until Endgame basically so I think uh we can wrap up on that yeah I think we I'm really looking forward to doing a spoiler review oh yeah yeah same <laughs> uh so do you want to give like a rating like what would you rate it out of like 10 perhaps or like whatever rating oh see okay so out of, out of 10 I would give like would a a 7 out of 10. I was going to say it's a 7 out of 10. Me personally, I think you're going to enjoy the first act alone. On that note, thank you once again for watching. As always, please like and subscribe. Who knows, we might do more movie reviews down the line. If you guys maybe want an MCU rewind review of all the past MCU movies, we could do that too. So thank you. Take care once again. See ya.